Hello and welcome to online worship for the New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen, New Jersey, where the Rev. Dr. Ronald L. Owens is our senior pastor. We invite you to clap your hands, stomp your feet, and join us as we worship the true and living God. Good morning, good morning, New Hope. <laughs> We're so glad to be able to worship with you on this, the fifth Sunday in November. God has been keeping us all week long. He's been nothing short of amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, as we jump right into our worship, we're going to begin with our morning prayer by Reverend Jackson, followed by the praise selection by the Unity Choir. Amen. Let us pray. Most kind and gracious and merciful Father, God of all grace and God of all glory, we gather right now as a grateful people, thanking you, O oh Father, for this opportunity, for this blessing, to be able to worship you and to praise you in a corporate way. We thank you, O oh God, for this day where we celebrate your goodness towards us all through the week. Father, as we gather right now, we pray that everything that is said and done might be to your glory. Everything might be uh, done in worship, uh, in worship and in truth. We pray, oh God, that we might worship you by the power of the Holy Spirit and lift your name. We pray that all that is said and done here, oh God, might be to your glory and might lift the name of Christ for all to hear and for all to see. Uh, this is our prayer and we pray it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with love and thanksgiving, amen and amen. We love to call your name it's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love to call your name and something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name Call you Jesus. 
man, if something happens when you call the name of Jesus right where you are, if you believe that, just begin to clap your hands and worship God right in your own space. He's so awesome. He's so worthy. He's so mighty. Amen. 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 When I call your name, when I call your name. Now we will have our scripture reading by Reverend White, followed by our offering by Reverend Donna Uzuanta. Amen. Amen. In your hearing, we will read Psalms 34, reading in the New Revised Standard Version. Psalms 34. And the word of God reads this way. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and it was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescued them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him, in him will be condemned. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's offering time. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Hallelujah. And we know that hallelujah is the highest praise. And I've been thinking, why do we say hallelujah at offering time? We say hallelujah because God is worthy to be praised. We say hallelujah because we recognize that every good and perfect gift is from God. We say hallelujah because we recognize that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We say hallelujah because we recognize that our giving is an act of worship. So one more time, it's offering time. And I dare you right where you are to either say or type hallelujah because God is worthy of our praise and our worship even in our giving. And so today we invite you to give your offering as an act of worship in one of three ways. You may use the Givelify app. You can download that onto your smartphone. When you have the app, search for the New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen, and there you can give your offering. 
for Disciples of New Hope, you can put your offering envelope number in the memo section for guests and friends. We invite you to put your address in the memo section. You may also give using your financial institution, your online banking bill pay. Make your uh, offering out to the New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen, New Jersey, 45 Hampton Street, Metuchen, New Jersey, 08840. And the third and final way that you can give is by mailing your check or money order to the New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen. Again, 45 Hampton Street, Metuchen, New Jersey, 08840. Whatever way you give, we invite you as you're preparing your offering to shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you because we know, oh God, that you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, God, because you have provided for our every need according to your riches and glory. We thank you, God, because you have made us stewards over that which belongs to you. And God, now out of obedience and out of worship, we bring our offering to you. We bring our offering through Givelify. We bring our offering through online bill pay. We bring our offering through the U.S. mail. We bring our offering, God, recognizing, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. We say hallelujah as we bring our gifts. And we ask now, God, that you would bless these gifts, that you would sanctify them, that you would multiply them that you would use them, oh God, for the building of your kingdom here on earth so that your name and your name alone would be glorified. Bless now these gifts and the givers. This is our prayer, oh God, and we pray it in the name of Jesus, the one who gave his life that we might be free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, New Hope, we have come to the hour of preaching. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear and to receive that which God has for us to receive by way of the man of God, our very own Pastor Ronald L. Owens. We would ask now that the Unity Choir would come with a sermonic selection. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Worthy of every breath we 
could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Say holy. Holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Savior Jesus Christ and give God some praise now for another day to his glory. We are thankful to the Lord for all that he has done for us. And surely we are no uh, worse for the blessings that God has given us. In fact, we are better today than we were on yesterday. And we praise God for all of that and even more. I want to first thank all of you for praying for your pastor during these uh, weeks of my illness, um, just to make everybody understand that I did not have the COVID virus. Um, I just ate some food that did not uh, go well with me. And because of uh, the poisoning of the food that I mixed myself, um, I found myself in a serious situation that only God could get me out of. But I. Thank you for your cards, for your words of encouragement, for your prayers, 
Uh, my ministerial staff was stepping in and carrying on in my absence and making sure that they checked on me to make sure that I was all right. And so we praise God that the devil did not get the victory today, nor this whole month. Will you put your hands together and give God some praise for his healing power? Amen. 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 During this time of rehabilitation, um, God gave me a word and a title, and I'm sure it'll put a smile on your face when you hear uh, what the Lord's title for this message is. Come with me, if you will. Uh, in the word of God, there recorded in the gospel of Matthew, uh, in the fourth chapter, starting from the first verse to the 11th verse in the King James Version. Matthew, the fourth chapter, the first verse through the 11th verse in the King James Version. These words are recorded by the Apostle Matthew uh, in the life of Jesus and his experiences. Hear Matthew now as he speaks out of this gospel. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sitteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of, their, of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Shall we bow in a word of prayer? Precious and eternal God, our Father, now take this weak body, strengthen it that it might, dear Father, be a vessel in your hands. Transform me, dear Father, into a vessel where your message is not only held, but proclaimed. We pray that the truths of this message might free someone from bondage, save somebody from sin, and encourage somebody to know that thou art God all by yourself. To this end, O oh God, allow the Holy Spirit to use me now. Bring back to my remembrance all that you have put in my heart and in my mind. Touch and anoint me and dear Father, bless me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Not that I should be glorified, but dear Father, that you shall be glorified through your word, through your truth, and through the power of transformation. To this end, O oh God, be with us now as we share your word with your people, that, dear Father, you might get the glory, the honor, 
and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For a subject, for a theme, for thought, I present to you the title, what the, sh what the devil should not have done. What the devil should not have done. Isn't it interesting, beloveds of God, that it seems like in life, when things are going so well and things are uh, doing well, it seems like the devil wants to always interrupt and do something to disturb, disturb the status quo. I don't care how far we get into our living and life, the joys of progress and the rewards of our labor, even in the sense of our worship and praise and faithfulness to God, somehow the devil wants to put his ugly head into the situations that we're in, whether it be through sickness or loss of job or whatever the situation is to disturb us and to trouble us and to confuse us in our lifelong pursuit to serve God and to give him the glory. And listen to me very carefully. There are some things that God presents and allows to happen. And then there are some things that he allows the devil to do so that he can strengthen us and give us the fortified faith that we need to serve him. Here in this passage of scripture, we see that Jesus is tempted. But permit me to say that the audacity of Satan is to believe that he can disrupt the very will of God. Isn't this something that he has done from the beginning of time to this very moment that tried to disturb the very divine plan of God and every time he tried, he was defeated. Can I say to you, even in the beginning, even in the beginning, in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, around the 12th and 15th verse, Satan now is recorded by Isaiah, the angel of light, the choir director of praise in heaven, decides now that he can be greater than God. He declares in Isaiah that he rises and wants to rise higher than the stars of God. He declares that he can be greater. Here, this angel Lucifer, who was the throne keeper of God, the, the leader of the angelic body, the most beautiful angel created, now in all of his attitude and all of his pride, could not see his position was the greatest that he could obtain, but now wanting to be greater then God, let me tell you that he should not have done it. He should not have tried to rise above God. For in Revelation, the 12th chapter, around the seventh and ninth verse, Revelate, the revelator says that there was a war in heaven and one third of the angels that was, was led by Lucifer lost the war and were cast out of heaven and cast to the very earth. I tell you right now that the devil should not have done it. For understanding this, that God cannot be defeated. He has all power in his hand. Satan has some power, but God has all power. And I want you to be reminded of this, that when you're discouraged, when you're troubled by what the devil does in your life, you should always understand that you serve a God who has all power in his hand and that Satan just has what God allows him to have. Well, when we think about this passage of scripture that we've read to you today, we think about how Satan loves to tempt and to try and to challenge the believers of God. This word today is an encouragement to each and every one of you to understand that no matter what Satan puts upon your life, 
God has the power to defend against him and give you the victory. Shall we see the example of Jesus? Jesus now is just after being baptized in the river Jordan by John, declared to be the Lamb of God, declared to all the people to be the Messiah and the Savior of the whole world. And the Holy Spirit now takes him up into the wilderness. And there he presents Jesus before Satan to be tempted of Satan. We should understand that the audacity of Satan will allow him to tempt anybody and to try anybody, including Jesus Christ. Jesus now has just gone through 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. His flesh is weak. He's hungry. He now desires to be fed. And just as he comes out of his fasting, Satan now presents to him that with all of Jesus' power, why not change these rocks into bread? You know that you're hungry. You know that your body is weak. You have the power to do it. And Jesus now declares to him that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of, the, out of the mouth of God. My first question, or should I say, my first point to you today is be careful of what you hunger for. Be careful of what you hunger for. What do you hunger for? Do you hunger for power? Do you hunger for popula pop popularity? Do you hunger for someone to give you the riches of the world? Are you seeking that which only God can give you, but you're trying to take shortcuts to get to what you want? The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Listen, the Lord in this passage shows uh, us not what fills the hunger, but the source that satisfies the hunger. You see, there's a difference between being filled and being satisfied. Understand this, beloveds of God, I think it's Lay's potato chips that says you just can't eat one. It's because it takes more than one to satisfy you. But are we glad today that when we have received the spirit of God and the power of God, the glory of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, that when we receive him, we are totally satisfied, filled and satisfied. Understanding that what the world has to offer us can never compare to what God has already promised us. Understanding that we can take shortcuts that will never satisfy us. I'm reminded of the fact that when I bought my first new car, I was happy and satisfied until the new car smell faded from the car. I remember the first brand new suit that I had. I was overjoyed and wore it with pride until I wore it two or three times and, and the joy of that suit left me. But I'm glad today to say to you that when we find Jesus that renews our spirit, we're never, never ever unexcited. God has new mercies every day. God has breakthroughs that are miraculous and supernatural that only God's hand can do. Understand, beloveds of God, we can take the offer of Satan that will satisfy us for time and fill us for a time, but God's satisfaction is for eternity. And I'm glad today that there's nothing that Satan can offer me that I already don't have through the glory of God and the mercy of God. Satan had tempted the Lord with physical food. God showed Satan that man does not live 
by just simple bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The second temptation that the Satan put on our Lord and Savior was that he asked Jesus to test God. He asked Jesus to test God. My brothers and my sisters, be careful what you are made to test. In verses five and seven, Satan will try uh, to tempt you to test God. Satan uses out of context, Psalm 91, 11 through 12, urging Jesus to cast thyself down because he said, God would bring angels to help him along the way. And Jesus answers Satan by saying, thou shalt not tempt the Lord from Deuteronomy 6 and 16. See, such action to put God to the test is not faith, but doubt. When you've got to test God, it means you have no faith in God. And the devil wanted Jesus to prove that he had doubt in God rather than faith. Listen to me. When you got to test God, you don't believe what God tells you. I don't have to test God. I already know what God can do. I don't have to try God. I've already experienced the glory and the goodness, the power and the overcoming that God and only God can give. Aren't you glad this morning that we don't have to test God? All we got to do is trust God. Can I tell you? When he tested Job, Job did not test God. He trusted God. Even when his friends forsake him, even when his wife told him to curse God, even when the boils and the sores covered his body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He declared, if these earthworms consume my body, I still believe that my savior lives. Beloveds of God, he tried to test the three Hebrew boys and put them in a fire that was cast seven times hotter than ever before. But before they were cast in, they didn't have to test God. They declared, if, we are cast into the fire. We still know that our God is able. Do I have a witness in the house? God will always overcome. God will always bring us through. God will always make a way out of no way. We can trust him because he's true to his promise. Can I say to you, ironically, the scripture that Satan quoted goes on to promise God's ultimate victory over him. But yet he admitted, omitted that to tempt Jesus. Isn't it something how Satan will give you a half truth rather than whole truth? Aren't you glad today that we know the whole truth of God? We know the whole truth of his word, that no matter what we are going through, God is able. No matter what we are facing, God is able. No matter what the devil puts us through, God is able. And then last but not least, be careful of what Satan offers you. In the passages in verse of eight through 11, Satan is a deceiver and a usurper. He will promise you the world and put your, your soul in danger of hell. You see, he is the prince of this world, but God is the king and ruler of this world. And I want you to understand that it doesn't matter what you get here upon earth. It doesn't matter what he offers in the sense of nations and principalities that he declares that you'll be able to rule over. What good is it to rule a nation in this world and lose your soul for eternity? I would rather be a prince or a princess in the kingdom of God. I would rather be an heir to the kingdom of God 
I would rather rule in heaven than to suffer in hell. Well, my beloveds of God, it's something how Satan will come in your life and make you believe that there is no hope, that there is no help, how he will tempt you and try to offer you things that he can't deliver. But aren't you glad that we got a God who can make a way out of no way, that we have a God who can talk to a woman at a well, who is thirsty for the water of the well. But once the Lord revealed the truth and the might of God, she left her pot at the well and told a city about a man who knew all about her. You see, the well quenched her thirst for a moment, but Jesus quenched her thirst for eternity. And so beloveds of God, I'm here to tell you that the devil should not have done it. He should not have tried to tempt us and to try us, for it just draws us closer to God. Do I have a witness in the house that the more he tries to tempt us, the closer we get to God? Job now was faithful until the end, and God returned to him not only what he lost, but more than what he lost. The devil tried to destroy the three Hebrew boys but they go down in eternity, going into the fiery furnace and allowing God to make a fireproof sweet where they kept company with the son of God and never were consumed by the fire. Beloveds of God, they threw Daniel in the lion's den, but he made the lion's den a boudoir that now Daniel could sleep and use the lions as the pillow to brace his head. Isn't that how God is? God can make your obstacles your stepping stones. God can make those barriers that you seem to not be able to get over an open door for new opportunities and new blessings from God. So beloveds of God, I declare to you, even out of my sickness, that when the devil tries to pull you down, you got a God who can pull you up. When God now tries to destroy you, you have a God who can build you up and make you stronger than ever before. Don't let the temptation of Satan discourage you, but allow him to know it draws you closer to God. And because you're closer to God, God will put his arms around you give you his grace, his mercy, and his peace, and allow you to be a victor over all of your obstacles and to be a witness for those who watch you, to know that the power of God is ever greater than the power of Satan. Well, Satan, you should not have tried to do it. For when you tried to tear us down, God built us up. And I have a witness today to let you know that God is a healer, God is a sustainer, God is the blesser of our lives. Praise God that Satan should not have ever done it, never tempted us, never tried us, never tried to defeat us. It only allowed us to get closer to God. Amen and amen and amen. As we bow our heads in prayer. Precious God, our Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, dear Father, that you have encouraged us through the temptation of Satan, of Jesus, as an example for each and every one of us, not to fall to his tricks, to allow the weakness of our hunger to allow us to fail our faith in God. Not to allow Satan to offer us what he cannot deliver, nor God. Allow Satan to tempt us to try to test God that only shows our doubt and not our faith. Today, God, let this word encourage somebody 
that when Satan comes with his ugly head to tempt us and to try to destroy us, allow us to declare as Jesus did, Satan, hence, Satan, get behind me. Today, some soul, Lord, might hear this word and be urged to serve and to be saved by your hand. We pray that you'll prick their heart now, soften it, that dear Father, they might receive your invitation of salvation and be delivered and fortified by the grace and mercy of God. If they hear this prayer, allow them to show themselves and to surrender themselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today and you have heard the message, if you're here today and you have heard the salvation, the power of God that is in the life of the believer, you too can be a recipient of that same word that same power, that same strength. We pray today that if in your heart you have received this invitation, the bride says come, the spirit says come, whosoever let him come and take the water of life. We pray today that you will open your heart and receive Christ and the mercy that only God can give. If you now want to give your life to Christ, you can say yes to the Lord so the Lord can say yes to you. Declare that you have received the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as Savior of your life. Surrender your will and say, I will be obedient and recognize you as Savior. If that is what you have done right now, we invite you to call our church Leave your number and your name and your confession that you have received the Lord Jesus Christ through the ministry of the New Hope Church. And we will immediately call you back and receive your confession and confirm your salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just call 732-549-8941 and we will get back to you immediately to rejoice with you and to celebrate your new born life in Jesus Christ. We praise God for you even right now as you contemplate and give your life to the Lord. Amen and amen. We thank God for this beautiful, beautiful service and for all of you who have gathered here to watch this service and to be in fellowship, each of us in our ministerial staff that we have strived to give you the word of God, the celebration of God, the love of God, and to encourage you to continue to serve him in a mighty way. Our God is pleased with your attendance and for your support to the New Hope Baptist Church. We thank all of our disciples of Christ and all of our friends across the country that tune in every Sunday to watch and to worship with us. Continue to be a blessing to God and to let the devil know he should not have done it, should not have tried. For the more he tries, the closer we get to the Lord. We ask now that you will be uh, in our Bible studies on this Wednesday coming and on Sunday morning. We ask that you will, uh, for our men to be in our Man Up Monday, this Monday coming. We thank you again for your prayers. We thank our ministerial staff, so fine a staff that any pastor could have for being so supportive and loving and caring, not only for the pastor, but for the flock of the New Old Baptist Church. Well, I think it's time for us to go on and get off the air now. Why don't we bow in a word of prayer and receive the benediction? Precious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your truths. We thank you that nothing that Satan can throw against us 
can dear Father defeat us, nor tear us away from the glory, the goodness, mercy, and grace of God. We thank you, dear Father, that no matter how he tries, the results are defeated, and dear Father, you are glorified. We pray, O oh God, today that you will bless every hearer on this broadcast and in this service. We pray that you will bless our church in a mighty way and every listener in their lives as they continue to be encouraged by the word of God. We thank you for what you've done through this week, Vessel. We praise you now, dear Father, and give you the glory. And we thank you for this opportunity to worship and to lift your name in praise. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God be with you now and forevermore. Amen.